Hello, everyone. Hi. <laughs> it's good to see you all again. Can you see them? No. But they can see us. <laughs> <laughs> God, these things always start so abruptly. Yes, it's just all of a sudden the red light is on and there you are. <laughs> One minute you're yeah. frantically tripping over mic cables and then the next minute here you are. These are our new Cordial <laughs> mic cables, yes, actually. Yes, white. Nice white ones. Soon they'll be dirty, Lifetime I'm sure, guarantee. but right now they're very clean. What's that? I said soon they'll be dirty, but right now they're very clean. Well, hopefully they won't. You know, <laughs> well, everybody, it's great to have you here. I'm Alice Howe. And, and I'm Freebo, and uh, this is Inside Live. And our special guest today is Holly Near, and uh, we're going to go inside Holly's career and, and, and her thoughts and her mind and and yeah. uh, her just her whole belief system for crying out loud. <laughs> Holly is an amazing singer and songwriter and activist. She's got a, a 50 year career, um, just iconic artist in the folk world and beyond. And we're so happy to have her here with us. Let's bring her in. Shall, shall we? we? <laughs> Let's do that. Hi, Holly. Hey, hi. Holly, how hey. you doing? I'm very well. The amazing technology we're living with. In oh, my goodness. COVID. Got I the know. COVID haircut, the, the non-haircut. Got the... <laughs> I hear you. That's what we're all working with. <laughs> <laughs> Looks good. <laughs> well, it's uh, what you see is what you get. That's, that's how that goes. It's yes. really lovely to have been invited. Thank you so much. Oh, thanks for doing I, it with us. We appreciate dig, it. Don't dig too deep into my brain. We, you know. <laughs> well, that's that's always the danger. I know. We 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 do tend to go deep in this little conversation. That's that's what's fun about it. We that's, like to have friends on here who are willing to talk. You know, not just about their new album, although that's great too. But you know who you are and and how you started down this path and and what led you here yeah how you arrived moment. at this place in life but maybe we oh. should start with a song yeah you want to start with something or do you want to would you sing us something i will i um let me tell grab. us about what you'd like to do sure i will um let's see what i think i'm going to sing a song called fired up because i i just found out that the other day chile uh, which has been a really repressive place off and on over time had a terrible constitution and the turnout was huge and it was 80 percent to 20 percent to rewrite the constitution wow that's sort of amazing there was a conservative person wow. in power wanting to hold on to the pinochet past mm -hmm. which is not one worthy of holding on to lots of death and destruction so i'm feeling very inspired i've been listening to some of the latin american music that uh comes out of chile but I'm hoping that we can get the same fire going here in the next few days and really go out to vote, not only for a candidate, but for integrity. You know, please bring back some integrity, Amen. some commitment to the law. Um, it's not always perfect, but it's really gone downhill. So I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sing Fired Up. Please. Fired up, ain't gonna take it no more. We're tied up, ain't gonna take it no more. You say cool down, we say step down. You're breaking my mother's heart. Shame, shame. Fired up, ain't gonna take it no more. We're tied up, ain't gonna take it no more. You say cool down, we say step down. You're breaking my mother's heart. Shame, shame. Children need schools more than they need jails. And that's where our society fails. First seven years creates a child's foundation. It's mandatory for a healthy nation. So we're fired up, ain't gonna take it no more. Tied up and gonna take it no more. You say cool down, we say step down. You're breaking my mother's heart, shame, shame. How could we forget that the children come first? We left them alone and they died at first. Mothers and fathers confused and forlorn. And when the children are missing, well, there's something wrong. Can't just focus on the kids with wealth. Can't pick and choose who gets the health care. Take another look at the great divide. It looks dangerously similar to genocide. So fired up, ain't gonna take it no more. We're tied up, ain't gonna take it no more. You say cool down, we say step 
down, you're breaking my mother's heart. <laughs> mm. All right. I love that you're breaking my mother's heart. You know, it, it's really interesting listening to you, Holly, and, and obviously you and I both come from the 60s, a little bit from the 50s, but... So hey, 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 no, 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 no. <laughs> no, not the fifties. Well, well, I was, I, I was a, I was an early teenager in the fifties, actually. Not a teenager yet, but, but it's, it's interesting. <laughs> nice I, I, was li I was listening to him and and checking out the lyrics and just thinking how much and, and talking about Pinochet and Ch and Chile and and how things don't change. I mean, and and I I know we have so, you know probably people of all different political persuasions on here, and we're not trying to tell you how to vote. We're not trying to tell you what's right what's wrong you know we we do have our beliefs as as you have yours but it's interesting uh i go back to the time of, of vietnam and and nixon and uh mm -hmm. and uh, when the war first started and i was a kid growing up in in a little coal town in pennsylvania uh, i believed in the war because all our wars have been good up to that point and it wasn't until i happened to wander into the counterculture simply because my hair was long and i was playing in a rock and roll band that I started to hear some other points of view. I got some other information, and uh, and and my beliefs began to change based off information, and uh, and and I, I've since come to have great compassion uh, for those people who were in favor of the war, uh, for those people who fought in it. Some of whom thought it was the right thing to do. Some of whom thought it was the wrong thing to do. Uh, their view of Nixon. Uh, and 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 Republicans in general, and, and in fact, there were a lot of Democrats. Gosh, it was Kennedy's and Johnson's war, so it wasn't just a Republican Democrat thing. It was, you know, good war, or bad war. So it's interesting that with the times now. It's not a war, but you have this uh, a divide. You talked about the great divide in that song, and and we have the the great divide happening now. So I'm, I'm curious what your thoughts are from 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 then till till now, and and what you see as as a way out of it, and how we can find some way to come together. Mm, what a big question. Mm -hmm. Well, we cycle in and out, right? We're humans. This has been going on for thousands of years. Uh, people, different people gain power and there's a power shift. And then, and then some people have money and some people don't. And, and some people live through a potato famine and some people mm. live through uh, a, a genocide in their, in their lives and other people sail through their life and, and never have anything uh, particularly challenging happened to them at all. So it kind of depends on on what position we come from. But I came to my uh, real anti-war activity through soldiers who were resisting the war from within the military. They'd been there. They were still patriots. They were happy to fight for the American people. They just felt, felt like ultimately, whatever the original tension might have been, that the war uh, against Indochina was going wrong. And it was, uh, it was taking out a lot of young men uh, with it from Australia, from France, from the United States, from Vietnam, lots of different uh, people dying. And, and not I think to, it's not, not to mention the Vietnamese people who died from it. Yeah. yeah, I thought I said Vietnam, but maybe not. Yeah, yeah, anyway, yeah. I meant to. Um, so I, I think that it's uh, it's very hard for us not to um, grab onto a side. We come up with this two party system so much. Mm -hmm. And the masks for pandemic all of a sudden became a two party system question. You know, it's not. A mask does not mean whether you're a supporter of Trump or a supporter of Biden or a supportive of none of them. It means you don't want to die and you don't want to give it to anybody else. But we get polarized so easily, don't we? It's just, yeah. mm -hmm. and I know people who voted for Trump who, for the, they're just saying, you know, it didn't turn out the way I wanted. I'm going to vote for Biden just for these four years to see if we can get some leadership around this coronavirus because we're in a danger zone and we're in a war zone against a virus. It's smarter than we are. Mm -hmm. And then in four years, if a different candidate in the Republican Party comes up, I'm, I'll go back to voting for a Republican. And I think that's such sane thinking. You know, you don't get they don't not digging their feet in. Yeah. Um, and I, I know that a lot of a lot of white women uh, voted for Trump mm -hmm. and um Knowing some of those policies, I'm not sure why. You know, I don't think it's for women's good health, but they have to figure that out. And uh, I hope for this year they'll just shift a little. Biden's a centralist; he's not a radical. No, absolutely. Come not. on into the center for a minute and see if we can get some uh, get to talking to each other again. Get people on the two aisles, not to be so far apart, and you know, grow up a little bit. That would be that would be nice. I'd grow like grow up a little bit. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. I've been spending a lot of time the last couple of months. I was with my four-year-old granddaughter. I never had kids, but the partner I was with had children, and his his daughter had a kid. And 
I've been watching um, how we develop our knee-jerk reactions by watching her. It starts so early. That's why that verse in there says, you know, we. it starts before you're seven years old. We have to be right. so careful right. to give yeah. tenderness to. No, it's the environment we're raised in. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking as, as you were speaking and talking about peace and, and kind of that pacifist mentality. I grew up going to a Quaker summer camp in Vermont. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it wasn't really religious. It was more just we would sit and have silent meeting and it was very much about community and um, you know, what you, what you do in the community affects everybody. And we're all kind of working towards having a harmonious, uh, you know, group that we can all be a part of and enjoy. And, um, it's just, I, I just feel really fortunate that that's where I spent my summers, but that's just my own little piece of, of the world. And, and my parents happen to believe that that's where I should be. And so they sent mm -hmm. me there, but everybody has their own reality. And I think, it's it's really um, that that shapes us so much that early early oh, learning very much so. and the environment somebody just wrote on the chat I'm having a hard time following it it's going by so fast but oh, yeah. the idea that we don't have that many decades left in terms of saving you know getting the planet into a healthy space and that's not a Republican Democratic issue that's a, a no. global issue and if we can figure out how to tolerate one another on all the things we don't disagree with it would be it would be really good to work on this one because. It's the only planet we have, right? It's the only one that we know has life on it that we can survive on. That may change, but for now, that's it. And what an extraordinary thing that we get to be here. I try to it's, work out It's magic. Whoa. And the only reason I'm here is because of gravity. You know? <laughs> Otherwise, woo, off we off we go to the wild blue yonder. So. Well, un unfortunately, though, I mean, it, it has become tribal. You know, it has become uh, not necessarily Republican, but certainly right and left and and, uh, and and that that's the part that really it it it, sh it just makes me sad because you know mm -hmm. certainly the environment should not be political <laughs> it doesn't matter what party you breathe the same air drink the same water but when it becomes a question of if you belong to this party or if you if you label yourself uh, this or that here's what you must believe it becomes a belief system you know uh, religion uh, does a lot of that you know I grew it up with that I, 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 I've, I've let go of a lot of that. I've come up with my own, you know, my, my, my own definition, my own picture, uh, my own, my own God belief, but, uh, as, as we all do, but I think it has to do with a certain, certain rigid belief systems. And, and I don't know how we can get to the point where we can loosen that up a little bit and say, wait a second, this is not Republican, Democrat, this is not liberal, conservative. Well, see, but one of the ways is together. what you do. I mean, it's through music and art and theater and paintings and pottery and sculptures and Absolutely. singing together and all of that. I mean, that, sometimes we just need to stop talking and, and sing with each other. It opens up the heart, <laughs> you know. I have a song that's called I Ain't Afraid. I, I ain't afraid of, of your Yahweh. I ain't afraid of your Allah. I ain't afraid of your Jesus. But I'm afraid of what you do in the name of your God. Well, to, before no. before we before we have Alice play a song, can we can we? Oh, hear I'd that like song? to hear that. Would you, yeah, would you? Would you? That? Are you sure? Because we don't have a lot of time. I wanted. Yes, to hear we, no, do. we have we, as much time as we, we want. Get to give do you whatever we want. It to you. Really? Okay, let me grab <laughs> grab this lyric here. All right. Well, I ain't afraid of your Yahweh. I ain't afraid of your Allah. I ain't afraid of your Jesus. I'm afraid of what you do in the name of your God. And I ain't afraid of your churches. I ain't afraid of your temples. I ain't afraid of your praying. And I'm afraid of what you do in the name of your God. Rise up. Find a higher power, free up from fear, it will devour you. Watch out for that ego of the hour. The ones who say they know it are the ones who will impose it on you. I ain't afraid of your Yahweh. I ain't afraid of your Allah. I ain't afraid of your Jesus. I'm afraid of what you do in the name of your God. Rise up. Find a higher story, free up from the gods of war and glory. 
Watch out for the threats of it, purgatory. The spirit of the wind won't make a killing out of sin or Satan. I ain't afraid of your Yahweh. I ain't afraid of your Allah. I ain't afraid of your Jesus. I'm afraid of what you do in the name of your God. <laughs> That's and great. That the truth. Freebo, sorry, you you weren't <laughs> muted there. You were. <laughs> I almost started play, playing along with you. I, said, oh, I, wish, I wish they'd get that together. It would be so I wish fun. Too. You know, I we know. just have that delay that happens when. But yeah. they'll fix it. We'll, we're going to be in the COVID so, long enough. Somebody's going to fix it. Somebody somebody's got, somebody's got to be working it on it right uh, now. And we thank them for that. I saw you starting to play some stuff on your. <laughs> no, I was like, oh, he doesn't know. You, you were, I, I wanted, to leave us, I wanted to leave us on the screen, but I didn't tell oh. you. I'm sorry. Uh, I'd love to hear a song from you too. What, what, oh, sure. Yes. I, you? you know, I, it's, it's funny. I've, it's taken me a while, Holly, to be comfortable, uh, as a songwriter sharing, you know, my beliefs as a, mm -hmm. um, I guess as a woman, as a person on the earth. And, and so, so much of what I write is really, really personal. And I, I really admire um, that that this is your work, that, that this is how you express yourself is through, um, you know, a lot of these really much bigger, um, really consequential subjects. I'm, I'm just dipping my toe in. It's like it's all in me. I'm just a little... I don't know. I just, I have, uh, do you have any advice for a songwriter <laughs> like me who is uh, very comfortable writing about my feelings, but um, maybe not as comfortable making, uh, you know, statements about what I believe? I think that some of the powers that be in the media have called these songs political right. and made a gap. But for me, my songs are personal. This is deep down in my in my heart. It's the only way I really know how to express my vulnerability. Yeah. I don't write good love songs to another person. <laughs> you know, it's just I never have been able to do it. And I love that some people do because what I I what would I do when I need a love song if somebody else wasn't writing them? So I don't feel as if there's one is better than the other as long as whatever we're writing is coming from deep into our souls and we're not just skimming along the top. Uh, then I think it's it's good music. So, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, and then you'll transition, I think, into writing about bigger global things yeah. if you start to feel um, desperate, maybe that you have to express something. <laughs> well, well, I I do, and I have, hurdles, you know, I, I have been, and it's true. I think m many of my my peers are sort of getting to that point of really wanting to say more and, and it's just interesting it's it's always been a more like a private thing for me just what I believe and what I do in my own life and the people that I you know conversations I have but I'm not it, it hasn't been as much of a public thing mm -hmm. that I share musically but I'm I'm inching my way well I love that direction inching, love that you're yeah. inching your way and I also it's, think if you write it very if, if every time a word comes up that's um sort of a word that would be used in a political science class instead of in a song that you can back away from that and say, well, what is my, how can I personalize that word? Right. How can right. I make it a poetic concept? How can I use imagery and symbolism, which is what, you know, in Chile, speaking of Chile, they, people could get thrown in jail or killed for what they said. So they learned to write about the dove flying free Right. Um, from the or the bird out of the cage, you know, all these symbols that, that would help each other understand what they were talking about, because they right. couldn't really say we have a friend in prison and we want to get them out. Right. Or I love I love the song. Um, Gracias a la vida. Oh, um, beautiful song. Do you do you sing that ever? Do you? I, do that sing song? That. I love that song. And, and I loved um, I got to sing it with uh, with Mercedes Sosa. I saw hard. that in your bio and I remember Freebo, I played mm -hmm. you. Um, Mercedes Sosa it's such Beautiful. her her version is just oh you got to sing it with her I invited her up to do oh two concerts goodness. in California and we did two shows together so and we, we did amazing. that song. it's on yeah. one of my recordings somewhere I can't remember I'm gonna gonna go find that That's yeah. actually beautiful. you know I did but I didn't record it with her I did I recorded it with um maybe I recorded it with Inthiamani the Chilean ensemble mm. I sang mm. um uh the sting song about the disappeared Mm. Uh, with her we did that as a 
as a duet. And then we did a thing called um, Todavia Cantamos, where, you know, always we sing is, is what it means. Anyway, she's, she was a, a huge presence. She also is mm. no longer on the planet. But I just think you can find a ways of the Chileans, especially, they're not very rhetorical. I mean, mm. unless they have a rally song, like they have a song that's their big anthem that's uh, El Pueblo Unido Jamás Sarra Vencido, the people united will never be defeated. But that's a chant. Their political songs are so filled with innuendo and mm -hmm. delicate poetry. And uh, so yeah. I, I'd say look at some of the translations of their work. And you're probably not that far away from writing a song about the global world. Yeah, yeah. no, I'm, I'm not. And I actually speak Spanish. And I would love to read more of that in, uh, in the original. I should, I yeah. should look into that. That's a great idea. Um, well, sing us a really personal, vulnerable okay. song. Oh, let's sing about my feelings now. <laughs> Great. Okay, Holly, I'm gonna just um, I'm gonna make us big and make you small. Here we go. <laughs> just What'd feel like do? I just you know zoomed in. <laughs> oh, by the way, everybody, um, just as a reminder, I know you know this, but um, if you are able to send us a tip for the show tonight, we're going to be splitting all the money three ways between us three artists, and we're we're really grateful for your support. So thank you so much. If you can give us five bucks, that's great. Um, you know, if not, if you're not able to do that, we are happy you're here. Um, mm -hmm. Keep watching and please share the video. And actually, while we're talking about sharing the video, uh, if you guys watched last week, you know, but we're doing this giveaway. Um, again, from a wonderful company that's supporting our show, and the brand is Cordial Cables. And they uh, very kindly have given us all of these really super nice premium instrument cables and mic cables that we're using tonight, and they sound great, if I do say so myself. So if you would like to enter to win a 20-foot uh, Cordial instrument cable and a T-shirt, the value is $100 here on our little game show. Um, <laughs> and you can just comment in the chat, just say something about the cable, say like, I want to enter to win, something like that. Um, just put it in the chat on Facebook or YouTube um, and we'll see your name and also share uh, the show if you're on Facebook. So if you just share it and comment in the chat, we will enter you in our little contest here and we'll um, announce the name before the end of the show. And just one more thing about Cordial Cables, they, there's a lifetime guarantee. So technically, this is the only cable that you'll ever need. And if it does go bad, they'll give you a new one for mm -hmm. free. So that's pretty cool for any of you guitar players that have been out there and had gone through hundreds of cables as I have. It's a really nice thing. Yes, they are super nice. And they're, um, they're made with, uh, I believe it's copper. And they are uh, of an exceptional amount of copper and also have a, a specific construction that allows for the reduction of, of noise. So there's, it's a really clean signal, and um, that's what's really special about them. So. Yeah. And also make the mic, our mic cables are also cordial. So you yeah. can get either the, ca the mic cable or the guitar cable for free if you only enter this contest, <laughs> and it's really easy to do. <laughs> Okay. Okay, so let's go now. So come on, we gotta do a song here. I'm westward bound on the turnpike, and the sky is looking like rain. And the farther I go, the more sure I grow I can't go back the way that I came I passed the exit that led to my first love I can't say where he's living now But a lifetime ago, I'd have taken that road Just as fast as those turns would allow Am I covering ground or just spinning my wheels? Have I got farther to go? Right around the next bend it may all be revealed But the truth is you just never know Oh, you just never know
Well, I look to this road for my freedom And I drove it from end to end And it dumped me into the ocean Then it sent me right back again Am I covering ground or just spinning my wheels? Have I got farther to go? Right around the next bend it may all be revealed But the truth is you just never know Oh, you just never know I take it one mile at a time as I get up to speed along these wide lines I'm alone in the gathering night Adrift on a sea of little red lights Well, I've left in a hurry And I've taken my time Driven blinded by love And by the tears in my eyes Broken down on the shoulder with no place to go and I breeze through the night as I made my way home Am I covering ground or just spinning my wheels? Have I got farther to go? Right around the next bend it may all be revealed but the truth is you just never know Oh, you just never know Ooh, you just never know Thanks, everybody. Let's bring Holly back. Ta -da. That was lovely. I mean, seeing on the chat that people say that Freebo's uh, both his bass and voice are not uh, coming through loud enough. Oh. Someone said they thought yours was too loud. I don't think yours is too high. I just think Freebo's is too low. Well, thank you for letting us know. I should be keeping an eye on that. But, uh, but if someone also said that was amazing, your song. Oh. I just thought you <laughs> that one. Good, Somebody good. else went, wow. Oh. <laughs> I'm seeing it. It's, it's not about the bass and the harmony anyway, Holly. You know, it's really about. It. No. Yes, but when you when you do a song, we want your bass and voice up higher. It's yeah, all about the bass, Freebo. When I'm talking, <laughs> is, is my vocal as loud as Allison? No. Would you say no? no. We need you yeah, more present. We're not sure what's what's happening I don't with know that. What that is. Jeez, I hope it's not the cable. Oh my god. <laughs> there have been jokes on the chat about that. <laughs> God. Hmm. All right. Well, come on, see. plug in that cable. Yeah, it is plugged in. Yeah, play your bass for a minute. Yeah, let's see. Play some. That's better. Can you just when you sing get a little closer to your vocal mic, maybe? Here's it. How about how about while I'm here? Is that any better? You're just not very present. It's like, it's like it's not on. It's Why don't you take uh, Alice's mic? Check if you're going to sing. Oh, yeah. No, the same thing happened before, Alice. It's not. It, it might be the channel. Yeah, it might be the channel. Should I it's switch it? Channel. Why don't you put it in? Uh, <laughs> I could use her Thanks mic. for helping us, I Holly. Think it's probably, it's probably the board. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, well. Hold on, folks. <laughs> well, thanks for the info. Appreciate it. Uh, oops. Uh-oh. What have I Oh my God, why did the camera just go dark? <laughs> yeah, you guys froze in the picture. Oh my God, I have, have no idea what just happened. Uh-oh, here you go. <laughs> Holly, would you sing us another song while I figure out what's going on? Yeah, just kind of, I will. 
Um, this is a nice one if people want to learn it. I know that since I've been with kid, you know, this child, we've been, there's a lot of songs in my head like, how many elephants can we put on the train, on the train, you know, so it's, <laughs> but one of the songs she really loved me to sing to her at night when we we're going to sleep is a song I learned from um, Odetta. And it goes, there ain't no use sitting cry, sail away, lady, sail away. You'll be an angel by and by, sail away, lady, sail away. Don't you rock 'em, daddy, oh, don't you rock 'em, daddy, oh, don't you rock 'em, don't you rock 'em, daddy, oh. Soon as I get my new house done, sail away, lady, sail away. I give my old one to my son, sail away, lady, sail away. Don't you rock 'em, daddy, oh, don't you rock 'em, daddy, oh, don't you rock 'em, don't you rock 'em, daddy, oh. I got home in New Orleans, sail away, lady, sail away. All I got left is my old jeans, sail away, lady, sail away. And don't you rock 'em, daddy, oh, don't you rock 'em, daddy, oh, don't you rock 'em, don't you rock 'em, daddy, oh. I know I can't ask you to sing along, but I hope you're singing where you are because it's a lovely song to have in the toolbox. I always think about having a trying to have a song ready for any moment, any occasion. And for parents, this is a really good one for kids. It's nice to out around the campfire. Let's see, here's another voice. I got a home in Baltimore. Sail away, ladies, sail away. Train come running right past my door. Sail away, ladies, sail away. And don't you rock them, daddy, oh. Don't you rock them, daddy, oh. Don't you rock them. Don't you rock them, daddy, oh. Oh, the singers sing and the players play. Sail away, ladies, sail away. Let's sing our loved ones on their way. Sail away, ladies, sail away. And don't you rock 'em, daddy oh. Don't you rock 'em, daddy oh. Don't you rock 'em. Don't you rock 'em, daddy oh. I wrote that last verse because I wanted to dedicate it to Odetta and to all these players and singers that have left the planet that were so important to me, like like Odetta, like Mary Travers, like Lena Horne, like Gil Scott Heron, Phoebe Snow, Hazel Dickens, it goes on and on, Ronnie Gilbert, Pete Seeger. So I thought it might be interesting in the chat, if you all want to, while we're listening to music, is to to write down somebody who's left the planet that was a real important musical influence for you, somebody that really moved you. And I also might add, it's really hard to explain to a four-year-old what don't you rock em daddy -o means. You give it a try. Are you back on? I can't hear you. Oh, here we go. Oh, Wait, can you, you hear us now? Yeah. Oh. Thank God. Holly, I have to tell you, um, I don't know what happened to our camera, so hello from the other camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God we had a backup. Um, I, my mom used to sing that to me and I, I've known that song my whole life. And I remember as a four-year-old not knowing <laughs> what the heck that meant. <laughs> oh, it's so totally. great. I love you had that song. I, I know that song well. As soon as you started singing it, I, it just, oh, it brings me right oh, there. Yeah. And do you know how on the side here to open up so that the, I see more of the chat? I'm only seeing two or three at a time. Oh. I don't know how to make it. Uh, I hate to say that I don't know. <laughs> okay, it's all right. I'll just have to keep looking quickly. Go ahead, uh, and let's hear some more music from you. Oh my well, Rima, let me ask you, can, can you hear me now, Holly? Uh, much How's better. My vocal? Uh, much better? Yeah. Okay, we, we switch channels. You know, all right. thanks for being our, our sound woman. Our Thanks for <laughs> holding down the fort while I figured out which camera to turn on. Let's see. So uh, I I know I'm, I'm way distant. I see myself as a, Alice is very big and I'm very small, but... You know, oh, that's what happens when you get old. Let you me shrink. try switching it again. Let me see what happens. Oh, yeah, it's back. Okay. Oh, it's Good. back. There we go. Why does it have to? Well, Holly, so I'm going to do a song that uh, actually I did uh, a couple of days ago. You might have heard this song on 
uh, the Fleming fest yes, please that do. we did. Uh, I like and, it. Uh, because, yeah, this is a, a, if a song ever was timely, it's now, and it's very much what we were talking about, about the, about the divide be, between so many of us uh, in so many ways, uh, uh, politically and philosophically and economically and, and ecologically. And, uh, and, and this harkens back to my growing up in that little coal town in Pennsylvania in the 50s where uh, there seemed to be a promise and the, the so-called American dream, <laughs> at least for us white people, uh, was alive and well. And, uh, uh, you know, and, and a coal miner, a lot of coal miners in, in this town, and, you know, a coal miner could work hard and, uh, and buy a house and buy a car and, and afford to send his kid to college and to have a better life than he did. And uh, a lot of that dream is, has gone away now. Uh, and certainly not going to get into the reasons of it. We could talk about that for, forever, and maybe we, <laughs> maybe we will after the song, but uh, I want to share this with you. It's a uh, title cut from, uh, from an album I did back in 2005, so I wish this song were not as true now as it was then, but, but it is. The song's called Before the Separation. Was it an illusion back when I was young? You know what? I'm going to take my headphones off because <laughs> these things really cancel out a lot. Could you hold them for me, Al? Sure. They're like earmuffs. And it was, it was such a nice introduction, too. It really was. <laughs> I'm sure you can do it again. I'm going to do it again, at least as well. Here we go. Take two. <laughs> better than my ears. Was it an illusion back when I was young when everyone was living on a promise in unity and dignity together we were one believing in the freedom of a dream once upon the great frontier, not so long ago, the hope of man and earth were so connected. This beautiful creation here to help us grow is watching, watching as it slowly slips away. On this carousel of madness, on a horse to kingdom come. I see, see our dreams just melting in the sun. Won't you take, take me back to Eden, to a time when we were one, before the separation had begun. For the ones who have the money, and the many who divide grows wider by the moment equal opportunity it doesn't mean a lot to the one, one who, who has, has to struggle to get by on this carousel of madness on a horse to kingdom come I see our dream just melting in the sun won't you take me back to Eden To a time when we were one Before the separation had begun Hiding in our lives We blindly close our eyes Safe but not so sound No freedom to be found no. Now I will give my heart 
heart and soul show a dying faith fighting for a cause that I believe in tactical delusions lead me not astray for the voices of the healing will survive on this carousel of madness on the horse to kingdom come I see our dream just melting in the sun Won't you take me back to Eden To a time when we were one Before the separation had begun Oh, won't you take me back to Eden To a time when we were one Before the separation had begun Beautiful. It's mm. a great one. Mm -hmm. And people are saying on the side they love the harmony. Yes. Mm -hmm. Holly, so I couldn't hear you. She, people she are saying they love the song and they love the harmony, the two voices together. Oh, thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, and thanks everybody for a little uh, sound oh. sound tips. It's helping me. I'm, I got the board <laughs> right next to me. I'm like. I'm doing a lot of things right now. And and, and Mike from Cordial, just in case you're watching, it wasn't the cable. It was the channel. It was the board. It was the channel. So we picked it. keep entering in the comments if you would like to be in the cable giveaway, because I swear they are really great, and that was not the cable's fault. Lots of amazing, beautiful, wonderful comments oh. coming in about the song. Oh, that's good. Holly, I've got a question for you. Uh, yeah. Just musically speaking, uh, it's interesting in your in your singing. Uh, I mean, there are many different uh, derivations of folk, uh, and uh, very often in folk, it's not real soulful. The the blues that comes out of folk doesn't really sound like you know like the blues people. And you 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 have a lot of blues licks and uh, and and sensibility uh, when you sing mm. your songs. Uh, it's a really interesting combination of 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 the folk lyric and and the blues melody. Uh, where did that come from? What, what were your influences musically? We lived out on a farm, like far away from everything. And my parents um, got really infatuated with when stereo came out. And um, I am old enough to remember when stereo just came out. And my dad ordered a kit and he put together a speaker on this side of the room and that side. And he got one of those train demonstration tape so the train went through the house going from one side to the other <laughs> we were all we had a train you know right. but they went on to um order a, a lot of music through a catalog catalogs i don't know how they did it but we had everything from benny goodman to lena horn to um, marta schlama to elvis presley to belafonte and odette i mean just all over the place and um it's really how i learned that there was a world out there and the, both the music and my parents supported the idea of being fascinated rather than fearful. And they just said, when you go out there, you're going to run into a lot of things you've never seen here. Um, I'd never met a black person. I'd met grown up with Native American kids, but never an African-American kid. So um, I love that they gave us that, that instruction to be fascinated. And so, um, but what I really wanted to do after singing all those different records, and I would stand in front of the mirror and lip sync to these great women singers, uh, imagining their voice coming through my little body. Mm -hmm. And it was an extraordinary training. I mean, they were my singing teachers. I could just start weeping, uh, singing along with, with uh, an Edith Piaf song or whatever. Oh. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, she was so passionate. Oh, my God. And Judy totally. Garland. And, uh, yeah. yes. and then the cool and precise Ella Fitzgerald and just one teacher after another. But what I was trained really wanted to be was a Broadway singer. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be, or I should say Broadway star. That's really the important word there. Mm -hmm. uh, and I studied dance and theater and, and music to do that. Mm -hmm. But in 1971, I got an invitation to uh, do some work in the anti-war movement and it shifted my mm -hmm. focus. I was doing hair on Broadway 
And, really? right. Yeah. Wow. Right. and we were there yes. the night the students were shot at in Kent right. State. And the yes. actors all gathered in the dressing room to decide whether to do something because the hair was an anti-war play. Mm. They decided to stop before the end of the show and say something about it, um, which is of course totally against all union rules. That's not okay. <laughs> but they weren't, they weren't the kind of people that followed rules, uh, you know, mm. people that wrote hair. So, um, and it was still, they were still having bomb scares. They were still having people walk out during the nude sing scene or when the flag touched the ground. I mean, it was, it was a, an interesting time to be in the mm -hmm. show. And, uh, but that's really what I wanted to do. And so I think the, whatever the sounds are that are in my voice come from having been exposed to so many different kinds of music growing up, but also that when I perform, there's definitely that Broadway Ta-da! Yes, there. I feel that, and that, that makes so much sense. And I had read that you that you had that background, yeah. and it just, you know, you, the projection and the the clarity of each word is so um, it's so there. Oh yeah, you, you get sing. diction driven into you when you're going to do Broadway work. Yeah. Yes. Oh. But then I started using the consonants, not so I mean for diction, but also for rhythm because I sing a cappella a lot, right. or I sing with just a piano player. And um, I, very, I don't play the guitar, and I very seldom work with the guitarist. Mm -hmm. So the things like when I was singing earlier, you got to fire it up. Then you got to use consonants Oops. as part yeah. of rhythm, right? And yeah. it, it not only affects the diction, but it affects the the phrasing and the rhythm of the song. So important, yeah. We, we yes, in in our work together in the studio, Freebo produced my my last record and talked a lot about not just phrasing, but how the, the rhythm of the words actually, you know, really can enhance the rhythm of, of the rhythm section, you know, or kind of work against it. And you have to, you can, you can do so much with that if you focus on it. That's, mm -hmm. which is not so much in the folk world, like that, that's not so much uh, an emphasis. So that was, uh, I had to kind of learn that. That was yeah. brilliant. Unless you're coming up through a different folk other than the Northern European folk. I think that yeah. music in the other folk communities that maybe come out of um, Cuba or the Caribbean or Latin America, you know, rhythm sure. is such an important part. Um, For sure. Of course. Music. Yeah. And we can learn from it. You know, yeah. I, the main thing I say is let's not steal from it. Let's learn from it. And so many times commercial music just sort of skims off the top of it because wasn't it, I can't remember which black artist it was. It was uh, um, the, the white companies didn't want them, but they wanted white singers to sing his songs. Who was that? I'm blanking out, but oh God, just to make, to make it more acceptable. So and that's a skim, that's a steal, you know, instead of really learning from it. And, oh, there's um, so many stories of, of, black writers writing songs, Arthur Crudup, Arthur and, Boy Crudup. Yeah. and the Elvis, mm -hmm. Elvis's first hit and, and, you know, being paid however many few bucks for the song and hundred yeah. bucks to give away the writing and the publishing. Yeah. Well, I remember being in Japan, uh, doing a tour of the, um, Hiroshima Nagasaki museum. And I came out devastated, just absolutely mm -hmm. undone. And the tour guide said to me, um, Japanese man, he said, you know, you can't, be responsible for what went on before you were born. You can only be responsible to make sure it never happens again. Mm -hmm. So here we are as conscientious musicians and we can't be responsible maybe for what happened prior to being in the music scene, but we can work now to make sure it never happens. So even uh, songs that are called traditional that come out of the black community, I take that royalty and I, I contribute it to some organizations that's dealing with racism. It's their money, you know, it was their song, even though nobody copyrighted it. Mm -hmm. and um, just try to learn how to, to give back along the way. I love that's a really That's a really beautiful way of doing that. I, I love that. What songs in particular are you thinking of that you do that for? Um, I've, I did a song that was called There's a Meeting Here Tonight, mm -hmm. um, and somebody wrote it. Somewhere it came from, it came out of the church, you know. Public domain. Right. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And I just, so I just make a mental note. Yeah. And yeah. songs like Kumbaya, yeah. which I do as a hymn rather than as a fireside song, um, mm -hmm. it came out of a serious place. Mm -hmm. We sort of started making a joke about it, you know, oh, it's a Kumbaya moment, but it really right. is a <laughs> it does meaningful have... song for yes. the people in the Georgia Sea Islands, you know. So. How, how do you do Kumbaya? Kumbaya. Kumbaya. 
And in the Gullah tradition, they were saying, come by here, but it sounded to our Western ears as Kumbaya, oh, Kumbaya. And it was often sung when the people were going out in the ships to, to, in the boats to get fish to feed the community and there was a storm coming on, but they needed to carry on. and and they would stand together and ask whatever the power that be is in their culture, come by here, oh Lord, come by here. It was like shine, sign, bring your little help right here. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that's beautiful. Oh, beautiful. I mean, I, I've, I've never, never heard it like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, I have, have a new appreciation for that song. That's, yeah. that's gorgeous. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Mm. I never realized it. Uh, I mean, I guess I didn't study Holly Near, but uh, you've got an amazing voice. You really do. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Freebo, it's gotten better as I got older. Hmm. When I was younger, it had a harsh high part to it. Um, it, it wasn't bad. It just, it, it's gotten woodier and rounder and warmer, hmm. and I just like it better now. Oh, that's but, beautiful. Uh, yeah. Do, I, do, so, do you take care of it? Do you do vocal exercises? Do you drink a lot of water? I mean, do you have any advice for those people who are getting old and afraid their voice is going to go south? Or are you going, you know, if you take care of yourself, it can actually get better. But what are your thoughts on that? What do I do? Um, I don't ever hurt it. I don't do particular vocal exercises. You don't? That's what I was going to ask. Do you warm up? Um, I When I'm touring, my singing teacher said to me, you're singing so much that you don't have, I mean, I was singing every day, you know, five days a week, six days a week, and um, sometimes two shows. And she would just say, before you go to a show, just start humming, just start humming. And and if I wake up and don't, and think maybe I'm sick, if I just go, and I can get my hum up into my nasal, into my, that that part between your eyes, Mm -hmm. then I know that my vocal cords aren't hurt. I maybe don't feel well, or I maybe have a cold, but as long as I can get that resonation happening and not be sitting down here, singing isn't really in our throats. It's too bad people think that. But huh. um, if if I can sing like, um, and it just all stays up there, but the moment it comes down, oh, wow, 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 then I know I'm in, you know, I'm in trouble. Uh-huh. Don't bang it around. I guess it that's is, the thing. I don't bang my voice around. You do have to care for it. I've Freebo has turned me on to a, a tape of vocal exercises that's our, our friend Florence Riggs, a wonderful vocal coach doing them and it it really changed it my I didn't have a practice of just preparing vocally for shows and I, I think even if I don't do it every time religiously, just to to have like some kind of ritual around getting it mm-hmm. warm and ready is something I just kind of took for granted. But it really, um, it almost like it reduces one's fear of like, oh, maybe I won't quite hit that note or hit that note. And if you just, if you start to use it before, like, you know, it's there. It's It's just... More of that, that well, confidence it, is there. At it's your age, too, it's really important to vocalize, I think. Um, yeah. I don't mean to turn this into an age thing, but the fact is when I was <laughs> younger, I had much more trouble keeping my voice healthy than I do now. I I would get hoarse. I'd get laryngitis. I would, you know, I had much more trouble. And so, yes, do anything, everything. Anything to do with your life choices? <laughs> Well, I didn't do drugs. I was not a draggy or, or it, I didn't, um, I got paranoid and sleepy with marijuana. So I lucked out. I, did, I wasn't, nothing really was, was that. But it was a lot of stress. I was doing a lot of, you know, singing in war zones. And I was also mm-hmm. singing uh, in places where I sang too loud. You know, I remember hearing Liza Minnelli and I, at the Hollywood Bowl. And I thought, girl, you could step it back 30%. And we'd still mm-hmm. feel you. And I learned a lot from that. I realized that you need, yeah. it's okay yeah. to invite the audience to lean in. Yeah. 
Right. And I, for a long time, was going right there to reach the last person in the balcony, knock their socks off. And I, I learned it took time. It was my ego and it was my youthful energy and it was all. But just to settle down, Polly. <laughs> well, and I think also when, when, when you get, I mean, look, what we do by definition, there's ego in it. We're, we're performing. Therefore, we want people to like us and we're we're invested in them liking us and i think the older you get and the more you settle into the actual art and the craft it becomes about delivering the song yeah and so you know how can you feel a song if you, i've got to sing to that person in the last row i i'm going to ethel mermanize the best <laughs> <I can. laughs> Ooh, ethel mermanize <laughs> yeah I, I knew, but but it, it it's true it, it's it's and and alice and i talk about this all the time it ultimately i mean the art is getting the ego out certainly playing the bass you know it's a support instrument but when i first started playing i wanted to get my licks in yeah. now i don't really care about getting my licks in. it's about supporting but every once in a while it's my moment your little moment because the, the music is giving me that moment that's the right space is there it's saying take it okay now it's up to me to take it and do something cool and then lay back and i think it's the same thing with with singing the song mm. what it, you you you're you, it's about the emotion of the song. It's about the melodies, about the music. It's about you are the vehicle to sell the song. And, and that's, that's what I hear in, in, in your singing. Yeah. That's what I hear in Alice's singing, too. And that's what Frank Sinatra did. I mean, what an incredible uh, singer who knew how to phrase a song. Oh, beautiful. Just, yeah. um, there's, there's lots of ways to tell a story through a song. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lots of ways. Yeah. Well, some more music. What do you? Yes. Oh, yeah, Alice, tell yes. us a story through a song. Okay. Do you have a Do you have a duet, or do you just sing each your solos? Do we have a duet? We well, have the, a duet. The, the duet we do is a. We've got a real nice one, Angel from Montgomery. But we've also oh, had. But, but, let's do that. But oh, we actually have. Well, why don't you do something? We could do a the homeless song, which is a duet. Oh yeah, we could do that. I, I kind of wanted to do that. Yeah, in we'll, another. Maybe we'll do a couple in a row here. Yeah. Yeah. All right, All right here we go. I want to do a new song for you guys. June is a dream. Sweet summer breeze coming through my screen door. Don't wake me up, I'll be begging for more. I'll always let you in. Pieces of fate fall into my hands. What we did that night wasn't part of my plans. Heart to accept when you don't understand but I learned not to feel ashamed you can run you can hide but it don't give a damn for your pride oh I'm a happy
left before the goodbye. Nobody knows it better than I, but I don't. your chair earlier what happened i just wanted to <laughs> tweak my amplifier <laughs> speaking of amplifiers uh, in terms of our our sponsors and people who help us out the people at fishman uh, they make uh, they make a wonderful amplifier called the fishman loud box it's a guitar amp but it works great with the bass and it's got a nice little it's got two channels, and it's got uh, some really nice effects, and it's got an XLR out the you back. Can so you can use your new Cordial cable to go out you the back. You can do <laughs> exactly, <laughs> what I, exactly what I'm doing. They yeah. also make nice pickups, but the people of Fishman have been, been, been very good to us. and We certainly want to thank uh, Norm's Rare Guitars, uh, yes. and, and they have us on their YouTube channel, and a lot of, a lot of you Norm's Guitar Freaks who are Fans. there. I use freaks in, in, in the best <laughs> sense of the word because you You're a you freak. I am a freak, yeah. Well, when we had long hair, we used to call ourselves freaks. But, uh, but, but Norm has been very kind to us, and, and the yeah. people on his channel have been very good. And, uh, and I want to mention, because uh, I've seen s several folks asking uh, where, when Lemma is going to be on the show. Actually. Next week. Turns out uh, we actually changed the date, so mark your calendars for next week. We're going to have Michael Lemmo. Uh, from Norman's Rare Guitars. You all know him and love him. He's an amazing guitar player and also songwriter, and he's going to be singing and playing some tunes and hopefully backing both of us up. I would love that. Um, that's going to be next Wednesday, November 4th, and we're actually going to be at Norman's Rare Guitars. So we are. the whole gang will be there. We've got a hail, hail. special guest appearance by Norm himself, so definitely, definitely tune in next week. How about that duet? Yeah, this song was uh, originally uh, I, I, it was it was not written uh, as a duet, and uh, I wanted to write a song about about homelessness, Holly, and talk about social issues. And uh, you know, there's a, I think we have an obligation in the folk world, and I've been in many worlds. You know, certainly with Bonnie, it comes from blues and folk and and rock. Uh, some people say pop. I'm not quite so sure about that. <laughs> not quite sure what pop is anyway. I think it changes. I suppose. I suppose <laughs> it does. But anyway, uh, uh, I wrote this with uh, a friend of mine, Karen Taylor Good, and uh, uh, I wanted to write about homelessness. So uh, we thought the best way to approach this would be uh, to write it in the first person. Uh, so we did, and uh, I put it on my most recent record. <laughs> And uh, it's kind of interesting when you do a song in the first person, you, you kind of become the character in the song. The song does transport me. But uh, when Alice and I started working together, uh, doing shows together, uh, I thought it might be kind of cool to turn it into a duet. And uh, it works with two voices because you don't have to be male to be homeless. You don't have to be female. It's just just uh, be a human being. I suppose some dogs that are homeless, but... But we're talking about people in this case, and you know, it's the one thing that we're talking a little bit politically as well. That you know, the candidates talk about all sorts of issues, and I have not heard homelessness uh, come up at all. Uh, they're the, the forgotten mm. people, you know, a million, two million homeless people who just completely have somehow uh, fallen off the radar, and it's really, really sad when you have more and more people becoming billionaires and millionaires in this country. So uh, I don't deal with what the source of the problem is, but this song comes from a place of empathy. It's called When There's No Place Like Home. I used 
to be your neighbor I had my job and I had my pride But they shipped them both to China And it ripped a hole inside They took my house last summer Now I'm hungry, cold, and scared And I'm wondering, does anybody care? When there's no place like home And you're out on your own You feel abandoned and alone When there's no place like home I used to be a hero The strong, the proud, the few When duty called I stood up tall For the red, white and blue But no hero's welcome waited When his damaged soul returned Uncle Sam, don't give a damn That's what I learned When there's no place like home And you're out on your own You feel abandoned and alone When there's no place like home Please don't look right past me A simple smile could help me make it through I could be you If home is where the heart is Then where's the heart supposed to go when your living room's a cardboard box and your address is skid row if a man's home is his castle and the place where he is king what happens when he loses everything when there's no place like home And you're out on your own You feel abandoned and alone When there's no place like home When there's no place like home There's no place like home Thanks, Rebo. Oh, thank you, Alice. Just reminded me how much work Norm does with the homeless also. Yeah, he's, indeed. He's yeah. really uh, with the Midnight Mission. He works with the Midnight Mission, a, gives him a lot of money and uh, gets a lot of... Uh, close to his heart. Let's yeah. bring Holly Near back. Hi, Holly Here, Near. Holly. Hi, Fremo. That's a great song. Thank it's you. really something. It sounds beautiful to have you seen it. Thank you, Holly. It's mm -hmm. great. It's uh, honestly, uh, I don't mean to uh, patronize you, or prosthetize, but it's an honor to sing it for you. Really. Oh. <laughs> well, good. I'm. That's that's nice. That's that's a thing a person gets when they get uh, been around a long time. They get to be. <laughs> you become they get iconic. Be, they get to be honored and all that kind of stuff. Yes. <laughs> well deserved. Uh, you, be, you are. You. I mean, you become an elder, and uh, <laughs> some people look at you as being old. Some people look at you as being wise. Some people don't look at you at all. <laughs> I know, ain't that the truth? When you get older, you become invisible. No, I've been an elder in training for a while. I had mm -hmm. uh, I paid attention to the older women singers that have gone before me, and Amen. not a lot of them left. You know, it's really interesting to become the oldest generation. 
Yeah, I, I, I wanted to ask you, it's just an issue that's obviously very important to me is just your role in, in the, the, what women are able to, to do now today, what my generation is, is able to do in the music industry and because of you and, and in the world really, um, and the work that you've done and in terms of, you know, being a pioneer as far as having your own, uh, record label, uh, kind of paving the way for folks like Ani and Ani DeFranco and, and others who have begun their own labels. And I'm just, just grateful to you mm. for, for all of that. And I, I look up to you and I, as, as I do to so many of the, the great female singers that I grew up listening to, I'm, I'm just wondering if you could share a little bit about kind of how, how it was for you, um, early on in your career as a young woman, um, you know, coming up in the music industry and mm. I'd just like to hear more about that. Well, I, um, I had trouble getting a record contract. I had made a lot of demos for all the majors and I got, they, they were very nice to me, I have to say, but they would say things like, um, uh, we don't think you can be a pop singer because there's not enough element of submission in your voice. <laughs> or they would say, uh, I we, love that. Not enough element of submission. Yeah. I've never heard that before, but we, we like the melody, that. but you need to change the words, or yeah. you know, various, or you're too show showbiz, you're too yeah. Broadway. Yeah. So I think back in that time, and I I know both Linda and Bonnie, and I don't know whether they would agree with me, but it felt to me like, in terms of stereotypes, that you could be the red hot mama which Bonnie sort of followed in that path for a while, or you could be the helpless waif, which was Linda. But they weren't either of those things. They just right. got sort of thrown into those categories. Right. That Bonnie could outcurse a sailor and Linda was <laughs> fragile. Well, so, could, watched, so could Linda if you got to know her. Yes, exactly. You watched that, that beautiful uh, documentary about Linda. And you yeah. know, oh, man. Linda Ronstadt was not fragile. And, no, um, no, no. and no. Bonnie is just such a solid, um, wise, Person, yeah. So, but these were little categories that that the PR departments wanted to put put women, at least at least white women. I'm not sure that women of color fell into those same mm. categories. But um, I heard enough different things that I thought I'm going to have to myself into quite a pretzel here to uh, satisfy the requirements. And so, when I got back from doing a tour in uh, the Pacific, Hawaii, and the Philippines, Okinawa, Japan, singing for soldiers who were resisting war and racism from within, I, I wrote a lot of songs. And I thought, well, I'll just step aside for a minute and I'll make this record. And um, I, then I'll go back and get a record contract. Mm. So then I found out you have to have a business license and you have to have a name and you have to have an ad, you know, all this sort of stuff. And so I, I called it Redwood Records and my parents agreed to store the record. It was records at the time, store them in, um, uh, someone said Okinawa. Yes, we were in Okinawa. Um, <laughs> and it was, um, they would ship them out as people wanted them. They became the sort of distribution center in the living room. And I didn't know at the time that apparently I was the first uh, woman to start an independent record company. Mm. Um, if I had known that, I probably wouldn't have done it. <laughs> the beauty, if you have young people, don't tell them, you know, you can't do that. You don't know how to do it. Because if you know how to do it, you might decide, oh, that's too hard. That's, that's, I'd never even been in a recording studio. And I went in and made that first record. So I learned a lot after that, but, um, mm. We did. We laid down a lot of bricks. It's true. I think that we, a lot of the women like Chris Williamson and Margie Adam, um, Linda Tillery for sure, Mary Watkins had all tried in the industry to do that pretzel thing, and at some point just got weary of it and began working outside of the the mainstream. And in doing so, I think we laid down some bricks that allowed people like. Uh, Melissa Etheridge and Ani and people like that to just sail into the industry if and when they wanted to because we um, normalized um, feminist women and feminist music so that it wasn't quite so scary to the industry. Right. Well, and, and that right. leads me to the question also, Holly, about, uh, you know, about uh, gender equality and, uh, and, and about the LGBT and, and your early... Uh, advocacy uh, of that and uh, I, I like to say back before gay was gay you know when gay <laughs> meant something else uh, 
<laughs> and, uh, and I, 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 it, it, she's been on that since no, before I, I, it, came it, 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 because at Christmas you kind of, kind of can't say it. but in any event it's I mean uh, and, and having worked with, with Bonnie during the 70s and met her in the 60s and the whole women's liberation thing and, and I mean Bonnie hated it when somebody said wow you play great guitar for a girl That's and it. she I mean she would just explode <laughs> You know, so I either play great guitar or I don't. Not about a girl, you know. I mean, just yeah. stop it. And, I mean, I learned so much being around her and the whole feminist thing. And you were obviously in the front lines and, and you were you were living that life. So not just about the feminine, but, but just about, you know, gender equality and, and uh, you know, and, and not being, quote, normal, which now <laughs> finally is normal. What the hell is normal and according to whom? Uh, what are your What are your thoughts on it? Take Take us back, if you would, to, to some of those early days and 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 that fight for gay rights. Well, I uh, when I was about twenty four, I started meeting women who were writing more woman identified songs. They weren't out lesbian yet; it was too dangerous. But they were leaning towards um, uh, more woman identified songs. And I had just never heard them before. And I remember saying to my folks, you know, you brought all this music into our living room. Why didn't you bring these songs? And then mm. when I met these women, they said, well, we just wrote them last week. You know, <laughs> no way you're, you're just going right. to brought them in. So it was really a new thing. Mm. And every one of them was just put going a little farther, putting their foot in. How far can we go before we get in trouble here? Mm. And um, mm. so I came into a time where I was watching that happen. And uh, later on, and I had never been associated, I never had a woman lover, I didn't know much about the, the gay and lesbian world. And it was when I was making music with these extraordinary women that I ended up falling in love with one of the women I was working with. Um, and it was, it, was, uh, it was lovely. It was not as frightening uh, by the time I came into this world because of a lot of the things that the groundwork that had been laid before me. You know, we all benefit from that, which comes before. But I remember trying to get Wendy Waldman, who's a singer-songwriter, yeah, uh, yeah. wanted to do a double bill at the Troubadour. Uh -huh. And they said, oh, we can't have two women. You either have a, a, a male folk singer or a comic before you, but we can't have two women headliners. And we said, why? You know, and uh, but he wouldn't go for it. So later on, Chris Williamson and I tried again. We tried to get both of us to come in. And I think by that time, um, they'd softened a little bit, began, but there was still a no. And when we said, why? Well, I said, well, who would go first? We go, one of us. You know, we just, it's, that's sort of like not what's going on here. The brunette. First, you know, the brunette. <laughs> and so one night, we, Chris and I played there, and then Meg showed up, uh, Meg Kristen showed up and came on and did a special guest. And, and the place was just hopping. The place was sold out, people hanging from the rafters. And I think when a concert venue sees that mm. concert yeah. producer, they all of a sudden go, oh, there is a market here. Right. And uh, as, as soon as you become uh, able to take an idea, even if it's not a popular one or it's a scary one, as soon as people can start to see that it makes money, uh, everything <laughs> starts to shift a little bit. You yeah, know? Look, right. look, look at Ellen. Please. Yeah. Ellen DeGeneres and, and Melissa, who is on the yeah. cover of Time magazine having a baby. You know, it was like right. uh, things yeah. move forward. But in the, I think it was the mid, late 70s, maybe early 80s, but. Hmm. Uh, People Magazine approached me and asked if they could do an article about me. And I um, I wasn't that famous, you know, let's get a grip here. But they couldn't find any other famous actor, singer, dancer who was, would come out as a lesbian. And they wanted to do a feature on it. So I said, yeah, sure. I mean, I, I'd already ruined whatever career I was going to have in Hollywood. <laughs> I wrote a song called No More Genocide in My Name. You know, I was just of that. And I, I think that, may as well do the article. <laughs> yeah, may as well come out as a lesbian. So we did a piece in People magazine. It was very nice. They didn't. Uh, it wasn't very. It wasn't exploitative, and mm. but it was it was a, a kickoff. And then slowly, other people realized that they could they could survive it. Mm. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Interesting stuff. I mean, it's just. Uh, I mean, I look back. You know, and again you look back from the 60s till now and you originally said you know we didn't have this kind of technology we didn't have yeah. you know uh cell phones uh didn't have computers uh, we did have guitars and we had vocal <laughs> and we had 12 notes and we had the english language and uh but it, it's amazing how much has changed and 
you know, it's always, and, and I think you have the same thing, you know, politically now. You, you have a lot of change going on, and you have those people who don't want to believe in, in climate change and, and the separation. And I think there's always been resistance to change, and there have been those of us who've been willing to change or at least try it. And I think it comes down to fear, basically, yes. you know, and courage, you know, how you fight through the fear for something new. I mean, so many of us would rather stay with, you know, the old, uh, the old pain that we know rather than something new that mm. we don't know. Mm -hmm. Life is scary. I mean, look at it our is. relationships. We sometimes yeah. just dig our heels in and get stuck. Yeah. Um, and it, it takes sometimes a big explosion to unstuck. Yeah. You know, I think that happens to me just in the course of one day. I can yeah. get yeah. myself real stuck. And then, mm -hmm. you know, you have to, you have to choose to, to unstick. It's a constant. And I think people had a really bad image of what it meant to be a lesbian. But this, this couple came to one of my concerts once. They just think of them as all bundled up. It was cold. And they came back to the dressing room and they had um, disowned their daughter who had gone to San Francisco mm -hmm. and, and had told them she was a lesbian. And she said, before you do that, will you do me one favor? Will you go to this Holly Near concert? And they went. And the, it turned out, he said, the only idea he'd ever had about lesbianism was two women doing something pornographic with one another for men. And so that's what they thought their daughter was doing, was that she'd become a porn uh, oh artist. And can you imagine the courage wow. that it took wow. for them to get up and come to a concert Yes. Or they maybe thought it was going to be full of porn stars, right? Oh, my God. How disappointing. They, oh, my God. And they found all these happy women singing together, right. you know, right. all polishy. Wow. And, you know, wow. the lesbians are pretty clean cut. And um, wow. there wasn't any porn, and there were all ages, and there were children, and there were parents. And they came backstage, and they said, thank you so much. Wow. We don't have to disown our child. Wow. So it's changing wow. the image of what's inside people's heads. Yeah. Well, and the changing wow. of the image really involves with somebody at some point coming out and having the courage to, because it's not normal according to conventional society. What is normal is heterosexuality. And mm -hmm. if somebody is not heterosexual, there's something wrong with them. And it takes somebody to come out and say, wait a second, there's nothing wrong with me. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with my partner. And bit by bit, people become exposed to it, like with anything. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, you start to do some studies like, well, some people are just born that way. No, no, no. You can be changed. No, it's not a question of being changed. And mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, my son is gay. And I'll never forget when he came out to me. And he was probably like 21. And my very first reaction was, are you sure? <laughs> or, or you, maybe, maybe you haven't met the right woman yet. <laughs> and, 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 spot and, on, and, people, and, spot and, on. Oh, oh no, it, <laughs> hey, I mean, look, uh, <laughs> I'm a product of the 50s. And it was basically, it, uh, he basically said to me, he said, look, my, my friends accept me for who I am. Uh, my friends love me. They, they, they know me. Uh, you know, and basically uh, nobody I know uh, – has a problem with it, but you seem to have a problem with it. So I would suggest you go and look inside at what your problem is with my being gay and then get back to me. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and well, do was, your homework, Dad. Uh, no, really. Yes. It, it, it was huge. It made me look at myself going, wait a second. Yeah. What, what, do I have a problem with it? If I, what is my problem with it? Well, I did. And before you know it, it, it really helped turn me around even more as a human being, became more open in so many respects, more empathetic. And uh, it was the best gift that he could have given to me. So I, I think it takes, uh, it, 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 it takes adventurous and courageous people throughout the ages coming mm -hmm. out with something new mm -hmm. and, and defying convention and, and mm -hmm. saying, wait a second, no, this is who I am. And, uh, and, and again, I, I admire you for having been on the front lines of that. Yeah. Well, thanks. Yeah. Well, you know, it used to be that redheads were trouble. They were not normal. You yeah, need to be still are. Look at Alice. You know, but here we are, <laughs> Alice. Here we are. <laughs> still, still standing. I know. I remember a man saying to me, "Well, I can kind of imagine women being gay, but I just don't like. I just can't imagine men being gay. Like, I just can't imagine kissing a man." And I said, "Why not? You ask women to kiss you all the time." <laughs> 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 so come on. Great. 
Get a little self-respect together here. You don't have any songs to talk about that, do you? I've know. never written a song about that, but if you come up with one, yeah. well, you so can. funny. Maybe we can write one together, the three of us. Yeah. <laughs> Holly, you know, I'm going to sing us part one. Soon. I, I'm sorry about that. I'm having a really good time, but. Oh, no. We're, so am I. <laughs> Say, this, I, I just this is what happens. You get you get inside, and then it's hard to. Stop. That's why wow. we call the show Inside <laughs> Life. Speaking, speaking of which, Alice, do we have a winner in our contest oh, here? I'm going to choose one while we're. I'm going to figure oh, that while out Holly while Holly does a song. Something? Yes. Okay. So please, sing someone this one says, while Alice, you, you have a fiery temper, or it's a question. Do you have a fiery temper? <laughs> That's associated with redheads. That's, it, the, it, that's know, the mythology about. Yeah, them. it is the mythology, but. I feel like there's some truth to it. I, yeah, I think. I, don't, I can't speak for all redheads, but. I used to have very redhead hair. It's it's gray now, so that's what it looks like now. And do you agree with the mythology to some extent? Of, I wasn't a very um, angry person, but I was very energetic, fiery. Yeah, yeah no, I don't think of anger. I think of just, you know, chutzpah. Yeah. Pizzazz. Okay, right. <laughs> Okay, I'll sing a song while you find out who won what. Okay. How about that? I am open and I am willing For to be hopeless would seem so strange It dishonors those who go before us So lift me up to the light of change there is a hurting in my family and there is sorrow in my town there is a panic all across the nation and there is a wailing the whole world round but I am open and I am willing For to be hopeless would seem so strange It dishonors those who go before us So lift me up to the light of change May the children see more clearly and may the elders be more wise. May the winds of change caress us even though they burn our eyes. You can sing along at home. I am open and I am willing and I am willing for to be hopeless. To be hopeless would seem so strange. Seem so strange. It dishonors. It dishonors those who go before us. Those who go before us. So lift me up. So lift me up to the light of change, to the light of change. Give me a mighty oak to hold my confusion. And give me a desert to hold my fear. Give me a sunset to hold my wonder. And give me an ocean to hold my tears. I am open and I am willing for to be hopeless would seem so strange. It dishonors those who go before us. So lift me up to the light of change. Oh, beautiful, oh, Holly, and gorgeous. very, very inspirational in uh, in in this in, in this time. It's uh, 
Yeah. Well, somebody asked me once, well, what are you? Are you a Democrat, a Republican, a communist, a lesbian, a straight person? You know, they want out all these words. And I said, I, right. I don't know. I'm open and willing. And that's <laughs> Yeah. No, it's thank you so much for having me here. I oh, really appreciate it. Absolutely. It's been yes. great fun. Do we have a winner or um... <laughs> I I'm trying. I'm okay. Trying. It, won't, well, it won't let me scroll up and I can't actually see the part where people put their names in. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe Jen maybe Jen can help us. Can she I, do that? I texted her my my uh, well, um we might have to pick someone after the show is over because I can't How do we see do that, the Alice? comments. It, I will figure it, it out. I will find that. a way. Or uh, I don't know. I guess one of you could sing a a, a song and, and Alice could keep looking for your book. That's true. <laughs> Uh, this could go on all night, folks. Yeah, figure and, and out who won the damn game. Okay, okay. Here's here's the new plan. The first person right now to comment that they would like a cable will be the winner. Wow. Why not? Who would like one? Who was that? Somebody <laughs> tell wait, me. Wait, wait. How about the, the third person? Okay, the third. The third oh, person. the first person just got really excited. <laughs> Somebody's got to. Well, yeah, they can do it again. We're not very good at running this this whole. No, uh, we're not. It's, no, but you're so cute. Uh, You've been wonderful. It's been really great to <laughs> hey, hang out. Oh my gosh, we've got one. Yeah. Peter. Peter would like a cable. Great. Peter who? Peter Par Pars. Parziale. Par Par Peter. Peter, you are our winner. We will. Is is Peter a guitar player? Or now you're just or everyone's coming on and saying, "But I want a cable. I want a cable." <laughs> Peter, you are well, our winner. Well, I've, here, I've chosen him. But he, let's all be happy. He's happy. the first and, person. And, and, and here's the thing: for those of you <laughs> who didn't win, there's always next week because we're going to be doing this again next week. Yes. Oh, that's when great. We have, when we have Michael Lemo as our yes. special guest, and the people from Norm's Guitar and know he, that. He's but amazing. But you will yeah. have an opportunity, and the week after that. So watch again. And the but week, be week happy for that. Peter. Peter, you are our winner for the <laughs> yes, night. Peter. And Peter, will you do me a favor and write to me at alice at alicehow.com and give me your... your Actually, um, Norm just said he should email him and gave oh. him email. Okay, great. Holly, oh, you're oh. just running the chat for oh, us. Oh, I know. It's ridiculous. Peter, I only... See, one at a time, so I have to be really careful here. To... Anyway, I have to go. So do we. I love oh, we do so much. And um, Holly, thank you you're, for inviting you're wonderful. Me. Thank you. I had a great time. Bye, thank everybody. Thank you so else much here for being here. Okay. Bye, Holly. And vote. Everybody vote. Okay. <laughs> should, we, uh, should we take them out with a song, Alice? Should we? Yeah, I think okay. we should. I think we should. Great. And uh, we want to thank you all for watching. And uh, uh, How about we do Angel? We could do Angel. We That's had a, a request idea. for Angel. We do we? Yeah. Okay. Uh, who else we need to thank? Uh, well, Rock Seller, Rock Seller Magazine. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we could do that. Uh, Kevin, and Mayor, and Laurie, and uh, and also. Uh oh. Wait a second here. <laughs> it's falling apart, everybody. We can take these off now. I can take these off. Who else we need to thank, Alice? Um, we need to thank Audio Technica Microphones for giving yes. us these beautiful mics that we we're using. Indeed. And again, um, thanks to Fishman and I and oh and Alert the Globe Alert the for Globe posting our show on this also. Thank their you, site. Ron. Let's do one more, Freebo. Okay, let me uh, make sure that I'm in tune with you, Alice. Thank you all for uh, for tuning in and, and and for staying with us. We appreciate that. Uh, every week it, it's going to be different. Like I say, this was obviously all about you know Holly and politics and then sociological stuff and history. And next week with the Michael Lemo, that's going to be very much uh, much more about uh, guitar playing, you know. And uh, and. Uh, uh, we're going to be with Michael, so I get to play bass with him. So and excited we get, for get that! Get to have him play guitar with us, which would be really nice. And the week after that, we've got Scarlett Rivera. Now, those of you who don't know Scarlett Rivera, Scarlett is a wonderful violin player, uh, and she was a very big part of the Bob Dylan 
Rolling Thunder review. Yeah, maybe you've seen the the new documentary that's uh, it's on Netflix, I believe, called The Rolling Thunder Review about that tour. And she is such an iconic character, and not just, I mean, especially in that film, she's almost like a she's like a co-star in that film. She's just such a such a presence, and we're really excited to have her. So uh, every week we're going to have somebody different, and uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, we learn something every week, and hopefully you do too, and uh, hopefully we can entertain you in the process. And somewhere between uh, music and, and uh, sociological stuff and political stuff and, and uh, everything about the human condition. This is a pretty amazing song about the human condition, actually. Uh, and it's written by John Prime, uh, the late John Prime, uh, who unfortunately passed uh, from COVID. Uh, and uh, I got to uh, record and, and sing this song and play this song with Bonnie Raitt many, many times. Back in the 70s, Bonnie made this song uh, famous. Many people have covered it since then. And uh, I did this on my latest record. I'm still working on it. And decided uh, once Alice and I started working together again to turn it into a duet. So we'd like to share this with you. This is our version of Angel from Montgomery. Just give me one thing that I can 
Thanks, everybody. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Vote. It's going to be very interesting. We'll see you after Tuesday. <laughs> and uh, we'll, we're excited to be at the shop with Michael Lemo next, next Wednesday, November 4th. 5 o'clock Pacific, but between 8 now and then, Eastern. You've got a job to do, and that job is to vote however you do it. So. Thanks, Alex. <laughs> okay. Bye, everybody. Bye. Fade us out, Alice. <laughs> okay. Fade us out.